right, I want to go to your phone calls. We'll do that till I don't know, near the bottom of the hour next hour. Then I want to premiere segments of several films that are in the Paul Revere contest that I will announce third place Monday, second place Tuesday, and the $100,000 winner on next Wednesday. And it's been a big success. Please go see the amazing films. They're very entertaining, very enlightening, every subject you can imagine. 300 plus of them that we thought made the grade to get on the site, infowars.com forward slash Paul. And you can see the top 35 there. And, and, and it doesn't mean, I say those are the top 35. I'm looking at some of the others too might, might, might be in the running. I just, it's driving me crazy. I can't decide. And, but I'll, I'll have to by Monday. I've already pushed it back a couple days. So that's coming up. Uh, also, speaking of films, you know, I walked out of a movie last night and two cop cars pulled up. So I went and put one of my magazines on one of the cop car windshields. And then one of the cops gets out and says, hey, Alex. And then they go in. They probably had some people fighting or something. Who knows? They didn't look like they were in too big a hurry. And people always think it's fake. Like I'm on the hike and bike trail and cops come by and go, hi, Alex, while I'm shooting a video. Or, um, I mean, it happens constantly. Any video I'm shooting in public, if cops come by, they go, hi, Alex. Some people think it's like a production. It's, 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 it's real. It happened. It's not a big deal. People go, how do, how do they know him? I, I, I told you, I have 15 million listeners a week, folks. That's conservative, okay? I mean, in England, it's like, how does the cop wave at him on the uh, bridge by Big Ben? He must be, you know, with the... With the British intelligence, and no, I mean the co people know who I am all over the world, folks. And I'm not bragging, but liberty's popular. I mean, we're the show's a big deal, okay? And so I did satire. Police respond to only God forgives movie review, and 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 it's not satire. It's satire to be clear when I say that they're going to arrest uh, what's his name, uh, Eric uh, Schmidt of Google, because Eric Schmidt was on the magazine. So that part's that I want to be clear they weren't arresting him. That was just a joke I threw in there, but it's real video. <clears throat> Earlier it said, police respond only, God forgives, movie review. In fact, you can punch my computer up in here. I just had a mad satire. Just make, I think satire should go to the end, guys. It goes in the end or, or in the note or put it in the comedy section. The point is it's a real video, but I still see it as satire, what I'm saying. Now, um, only God forgives is very gratuitous, very violent. I don't particularly like that part. I think it's a horrible film, but also a genius film. And it's very thought-provoking art because it hits you on many levels. And I will do a brief review of Only God Forgives that I saw with some of the crew, the TV crew last night. And my dad went to. And I said, what was the movie about at the end? He goes, only one in 20 will get it. You know, the cop's psychic. And um, it's kind of like a good versus evil. And this is what the devil does. And this guy's basically like an angel. But it shows that good can be very, very vengeful as well. And there's also kind of an Asian exploit, you know, like, like Machete or the black exploitation films where the black guys are killing all the bad white guys. I mean, it's, it's also kind of like that, but it's produced by a uh, French slash, I think, German guy. So it's not really a, a Asian exploitation film. It's not even aimed at the Asian market. Uh, it's, it's bizarre. It's like 2001 Space Odyssey avant-garde, but very disturbing. So um, kind of just did the review, didn't I? <laughs> I need to do it. I need to encapsulate a little bit better than that. I mean, it's got that director, which I'm not some giant film buff, though I kind of am. I mean, I, I do my research. Uh, the director, uh, Nicholas Windig Refn, that I pronounce it. He also wrote it, uh, is a smart cookie. The cinematography is out of this world. The casting is out of this world. Um, but I did not like what happened when I got home last night. I did not like it at all. And I'll, I'll have to tell that story later as well. One of my dogs got into my son's fishing equipment. So it didn't go well after seeing that film. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. Yeah, I'll give you briefly my focused uh, review of Only God Forgives. Marcos Morales totally got to film instantly at the end of it. I, I kind of got everybody's review. Other people got other things from it, but I, I have the 
proper interpretation of it. It's not, it's 100% clear. Very archetypal. Uh, I need to write some notes to make sure I cover every point. Then I've got a big admission to make, folks. I, I may actually have myself arrested for thought crime. I, you, you've heard of the Hitler teapot. We're not going to get to it yet, guys. You've heard of the Hitler teapot that had to be banned and, and, and destroyed. Ladies and gentlemen, I have committed a crime even worse. I, I saw a Hitler mustache in the sky today, and that's, that, those clouds must be, no, no, no. We'll wait till I get to it. It's pretty funny. It illustrates political correctness. I'm going to tie it into the name of Jesus has become a dirty word in the politically correct America. So that is coming up, uh, actually, at the start of the next segment. I'll do that briefly and then get into all the other serious news here. Uh, but right now, let's go to Mike Martin. Uh, and and he, he says he's the owner uh, of the restaurant that's in our article at Infowars.com that Paul Watson found that was in the local news. Homeland Security is now regulating live entertainment. Indiana DHS demands restaurant owner get permit to play live music. I mean, you talk about thought police. Uh, so you say you're the owner of the restaurant, Mike? Yes, sir, Alex. Wow. So so do they think there might be terrorists in the, in the assault shaker? You know, I, I think it's more of a control issue and really the, the idea with the Department of Homeland Security attaching themselves to the state fire marshal, that really gives them jurisdiction in every business in that state, completely circumventing any due process. And that's really my biggest reason I'm challenging it. I, I don't understand why the Department of Homeland Security became part of the fire marshal's agency. I think we'd all agree the fire marshal is a very legitimate agency that has uh, a duty to protect the service, but I don't see that with the Department of Homeland Security. Well, they want the funding, and uh, Homeland Security is to replace the old republic. Homeland uh, Security on record uh, is there, uh, they've always said, to absorb America. It is the alien invasion. It is the foreign usurper. It is the Normans invading England. Go ahead. I agree with you completely, and I've caught a little criticism about the article saying that, you know, that I've blown it out of proportion, and, I, and I've tried to explain very clearly on my blog that it's not blown out of proportion, that if you look at the actuality of what this wall does, you cannot play live music. And right now, my case is in the state of Indiana, uh, through the state fire marshal's office and the Indiana Department of Homeland Security, but you cannot play live music in the state of Indiana without paying the Department of Homeland Security. The criticism I got was that that only applies to commercial public buildings, and, and I've tried hard to reiterate that every place in the public is a commercial public building. Everywhere that's not a home is a commercial public building. No, so no, it that. is undoubtedly a naked power grab. Sir, they have National Guard now all over Austin running checkpoints and, and, and DHS randomly. We always get there. It's on the local news, but then they're gone by the time I get there. They're now on highways. And you'll have Army with DHS, with TSA. Now in, in San Antonio, they'll have Air Force MPs at the mall with TSA and drug dogs. I mean, it's just, it's just, it, it is third world takeover. Uh, and... Uh, you need to have your state challenge this. I mean, what are the feds doing embedded with the fire department? Uh, criticism I get is that this is the Indiana Department of Homeland Security, not the federal. And my question to that would be, maybe you could help me here. Where did the Indiana Department of Homeland Security come from, if not from the No, 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 no. Department? It's federally funded. All of them are on record. No, this is the state traders. And 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 because and they take our money, send it back, and then federalize. It's like cops are like, "Yeah, we got some free federal money." Yeah, it came from your state. You know, it came from Detroit. <laughs> All right, sir. Very interesting. Uh, ever, ever in Indiana, I ought to visit your place. Thanks for getting on the show. What a small world. More ring a dingy straight ahead. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound 
When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com By the way, all over the world, they announced porn censorship in China, in Australia, in New Zealand, in the Middle East, now in England and now in the U.S., cybersecurity being set up everywhere is to kill the web, surveil, and get uh, e economic data to game uh, the free market. On record, you know, face scanning cameras by companies to find out if you're wealthy or middle class uh, so they can then digitally change the prices. That's why they're taking the price tags off everything. Uh, not letting you into events. If you are part of the young conservatives, you can't go see Obama at your university because they've already got a database on you and your name and they're face scanning you as you walk through. I mean, this is the technocracy. In Seattle, 14 years ago at the WTO, they would dig through your bag, the entire downtown, and they found an anti-WTO sticker or a pin you couldn't go in. We played that clip yesterday with Norm Stamper, the police chief who apologized for it. That was under basically federal orders. He said it was terrible and totally un-American. Well, what about now? They face scan you. And it goes on and on and on and on. This is the reality. Let's go back to your phone calls, and then I'm going to get into political correctness on PCP at, at, in the next segment and the attacks on the word Jesus and God and then tie it into banning teapots and dogs that look like Hitler and everything else. While our real rights are all being taken, there's all these imaginary things or smaller things to obsess over. D in Texas, well, see, I said I was going to your calls, but I just forgot to mention this, Infowars.com, UK porn filter will blacklist non-porn websites. Yesterday, Watson wrote about this and said, well, let's see what Cameron releases, and now they've put out what the government wants to do, and lo and behold, what the government says is disinfo, conspiracy theories. If you say there might be corruption in government, everybody knows that's not true. <laughs> everybody knows Kim Jong-un loves you and makes the birds tweet, and so does Obama, our dear leader. And now it's being announced also on Infowars.com. UK web censorship will be run by the communist Chinese. <laughs> BBC admits it. I mean, <laughs> Russian troops are preparing to take on Americans in civil unrest. NLE09, FEMA.gov. Russian troops train for crowd control uh, in Colorado Springs. Uh, Denver Post, I mean, cuckoo, cuckoo. I'm not the cuckoo when reporting on it. This is cuckoo tyranny. I mean, how much more naked does this have to get? And see, they're just lining it up and acclimating. Look, there's troops at the mall searching you. There's TSA searching you. It's for your safety. Just get used to it. Get used to being put up against the wall and ask questions. That's what you do in North Korea. I mean, America. Well, then what was wrong with Nazi Germany? I mean, that's what they did. I, I think there was things wrong with it. But that's because I'm a bigot, folks. I'm a right-wing extremist racist. I think Obama bombing people all over the world, putting Al-Qaeda in charge to exterminate Christians all over Africa and the Middle East is part of a globalist takeover pl plan. And I think it's illegal and horrible because I'm a racist. Let's go to D in Texas. You are on the air. Hey, man. Uh, I'm a first-time caller, a long-time listener. How you doing? I'm actually seething with humanity, and I'm so awake and so alive, I just can't stand it right now. <laughs> Well, here, I wanted to get your take on this. Check this out. I was just reading on the Drudge Report that uh, Lord Obama was down in uh, Vietnam, and he was talking to their president, and he said that Ho Chi Minh was actually inspired by Thomas Jefferson of the U.S. Constitution, and that what he did down there in Vietnam was a good thing. And, you know, like, yeah, I, I forgot crazy. to cover that. Will you guys pull that up, Obama in Vietnam? That's a pretty big deal, and in a sick way, it's true. Ho Chi Minh did admire Thomas Jefferson and was going to try to bring in more of a socialist construct of it, and the Indo-China uh, you know, area, the French that were leaving in the late 50s wanted to keep control of the opium. So the real fight was over the schmack. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so now he has come out uh, today uh, with praise 
for Ho Chi Minh. Absolutely amazing because Ho Chi Minh did horrible things once he went full commie and got the backing of the USSR. And then the U.S. would pay with aid. This was in Congress and hearings for, for the 10 plus years for trucks and missiles and weapons to then go and fight us. The Russians, they wouldn't let the port be bombed. They let the Russian ships come in with the weapons because it was a full spectrum dominance operation that was developed by Robert McNamara in the, in, in the, in the mid and later war where you fund al-Qaeda and then have a war with them just to make money off the war or where you grow the opium, ship it in and put people in jail for it or where, where you put the communist in charge, you give them the weapons and, and Ho Chi Minh was actually aided in the fight against the Japanese in World War II and, and, and our government in 49 put Mao in to China and they helped put uh, Ho Chi Minh into power or, or keep him in power but then the southern allies promised to pay more schmack money uh, to the western banks. Uh, and so there was a fight with the, with the socialists over, uh, over how much uh, uh, opium they would send to the American pigs, as we were called. And, and, and so it's all just a big sick gangsterism. So Obama shows the CIA trained, he knows the history, uh, that, that Ho Chi Minh actually did quote Thomas Jefferson and was like a weird libertarian slash anarchic socialist. You go, well, none of that makes sense. I, I know it doesn't. But, but he, he was put in power basically in World War II by the OSS uh, and by French intelligence. And then later, uh, again, it was all a fight over the opium. Kind of like Mohammed Karzai is put in power to run the opium, but then he doesn't you know, like some of the things that are going on, so then they try to kill him. So he comes out and admits that, okay, the CIA runs Al-Qaeda, it's all staged, and they're trying to kill me, and it's all admitted, too. So, uh, But does that answer your question? Yeah, I just, uh, one more comment, though. It just seems like utter ridiculousness that, you know, 50 years ago, that would have been political crucifixion for someone to, you know, give major props to a communist leader. Nowadays, most people will probably think Ho Chi Minh is some sort of fried rice dish. Well, no, I mean, the, uh, the average American who isn't aware does not know what planet they're on. You're like, hey, you know you're on a planet. Deep space is right out there. Isn't that incredible? And they're like, no, it's meaningless. More MSG, more trendy. I just want to act like I'm arrogant because I'm really insecure. I'm real stupid, too. I don't care. I don't want... No, that's ex the average person out there, the average go, what is that, a new dish at P.F. Chang's? That's exactly what you're, that's exactly the essence of what we're dealing with. And they hear me knowing about the history of Ho Chi Minh, and, and that's like, oh, what are you, some kind of weirdo? That guy's a conspiracy theorist. He said he read a book once. <laughs> like, they're, like books even exist. I say these are jolly ranchers in my nose I eat. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I said, just keep up the good work, man. That's all I wanted to say. God bless you, brother. Yeah, no, I mean, it's all just staged. It's multinational corporations that fund both sides with our money to have a war so they make money. I mean, that's not really hard to figure out. I mean, it's just, uh, let's go ahead and talk to Joseph in Texas. You're on the air, Joseph. Hey, Alex, how's it going? I'm doing all right, brother. Cool, cool. And I'm calling about the Occupy leadership, and the reason I'm calling is I was an organizer in Occupy San Antonio and was subject to this surveillance. Well, no, they had um, snipers on you on record, declassified, and if Obama gave the order, you were all the leadership was to be killed. And, and, and they're now public. Oh, yeah, we have death squads. We'll kill you for no reason if we want to. Let me tell you about this. I have a little background. You know, I'm a veteran. I spent two years in Iraq. I, I did training as a peace officer, and I worked in the federal detention system for a little while. So, you know, I know it's surveillance, man, when I see one. And about halfway through the protest, I went home. And I noticed there's a, a group of three vans sitting down the street from my house. You know, two of them have antennas all over them. The third is a prisoner transport van. You know, they have company decals, civilian license plates. You know, and then, you know, we always have people coming to our camp saying, hey, you know, who's the leaders? Who's the leaders? And we have other friends that also. Yeah, and they use a group they see as unpopular, actually run by the White House. Not that you were. They put it out as a projection. Then when they couldn't control it and turn it into a political movement they controlled, when it turned against them, then if it got out of control peacefully, they were going to kill you. So how, how does it feel? To know that I'm on a purge list? Not very good. Well, see, they're now announcing this to scare everybody, though. Uh, you know, it doesn't scare me unless we know they're much crooks. 
Well, they are a bunch of crooks. And, you know, I, I, I ran into your show there, and I've been listening ever since. And, you know, it, it's, you're, say, you're saying a lot of truth out there. And this really did happen, and you're the first person I've ever seen cover this. And all of us... Brother, I've had special forces jump out of the woods when I'm just trying to cover something in Florida on public property legally and start fires. I've been poisoned. I never really talk about that before. But, I mean, just you name it. Man, this is not a game. I've had them send sex operatives. I mean, I've lived like a real James Bond life. Half of it I don't tell people because it's so insane sounding. <laughs> Believe me, I know. I've had cops repeatedly aiming sniper rifles at me and, and trying to intimidate me. This country, and, and look, cops, do you really want to live in a country where you can do stuff like that? I mean, you have no future. Do, do you have more you want to add, sir? Uh, no, I just want to let you know that you're 100% spot on with that. I'm just shocked to see someone actually cover it i know uh some other organizers who would like to talk about it if you want to speak to them they were subject to the same surveillance and intimidation as well you know what i do when i get surveilled i surveil them and i mean it's just getting the point where you know what <laughs> it's, 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 there's two-way streets in this world you know we'll be right back because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is free humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. 
I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the new world order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. Folks, I'm your host, Alex Jones. We're back live. Thank you for joining us. Let me right now, before I go back to calls and other news, get into an article up at Infowars.com by Michael Snyder. The name of Jesus has become a dirty word in politically correct America. It, it's worse than that when you actually read the 16 examples he gives recently of saying a valedictorian can't thank God or uh, you can't in a school poem say the word Jesus Folks, that's your free speech. The state can't get involved in religion. You can do it. They're always taking Bibles away and expelling people at school, but you can bring a Harry Potter book, and people are like, it's wrong the law says that. There is no law. They just claim you're violating something made up. It's all color of law. Look at this. An elementary school in North Carolina ordered a little six-year-old girl to remove the word God from a poem that she wrote to honor her two grandparents who'd served in the Vietnam War. The Ohio State House banned Christian pastors from using the name Jesus when they speak. The use of the name Jesus was forbidden in all prayers, opening sessions of the North Carolina State House. Last year, a federal appeals court ruled that prayers before commission meetings in Forsyth County, North Carolina, that include the name of Jesus, were unconstitutional. Earlier this year, a Florida Atlantic University student refused to stomp on the name of Jesus in sensitivity training, was banned from class. Oh, yeah, that's what goes on. A student at Sonoma State University was ordered to take off a cross that she was wearing because someone could be offended. Do you have a pentagram all day? A teacher in New Jersey was fired for giving his own Bible to a student that did not own one. And it goes on and on. I'm, I'm going to stop right there, folks. Meanwhile, as Dr. Paul Craig Roberts said earlier, well, they've got all these uh, fake rights issues that they're throwing back and forth. They're taking our right to privacy, our right to not be arrested under NDAA and disappeared and killed. All these basic, our right to not be on purge list. It comes out, they're planning to kill peaceful political people. If Obama gives the order in a, in a open coup d'etat, uh, Nazi-like purge. The right wing won't criticize Obama for it because they're controlled. None of the left will. They love it. This is authoritarianism calling itself liberal, calling itself conservative. And then you see J.C. Penney with a good-looking teapot a few months ago. It looks It's like looking at a cloud and saying, I see Hitler. It's got a handle where it's supposed to be. It's got a top, a round top. It's silver. Let's, put, let's start rolling some of this footage for people that are watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. Here is the evil. Here is the... Evil, evil, evil. Teapot. We're going to show the teapot first. Yes, there's the teapot that they say is so horrible and that is so evil. And then going back to the piece that I put together with Rob Dew, there is the evil teapot and then there is my French bulldog. Now, I could have probably seen Hitler in, in, in a pile of dirt outside my house, but instead I started looking at Captain, our French bulldog, and I got to admit it, I'm like a closet Nazi because I kiss him right on his Hitler mustache. That dog gets kisses from me, okay? And from my children. They're, they're, they're sitting supporting Hitler. And look at him. I mean, he even looks like Hitler. His eyes kind of look like Hitler. He's got no fur on his lip, and it, so it looks like a Hitler mustache. That dog, J.C. Penney's, banned those teapots and had them destroyed. So I'm taking Captain today into the pound, and I'm going to have him put him in a gas chamber and kill him like they do stray dogs. And I'm sad, but I'm going to prove that I'm not racist 
and I'm going to sacrifice him on the altar of political correctness to prove I'm not racist and to satisfy Al Sharpton. So, Captain, should I give him lethal injection or, or give him the, 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 the pressure chamber? I mean, I don't want him to feel any pain. I love the dog. But, I mean, he does look like Hitler. And I realized I want to apologize. Maybe I should be gassed because I just realized I, my, my wife and I chose a dog when he was a puppy that had a Hitler mustache because of a subconscious racism. Can we, can we put the racism back up on air only to illustrate it and to apologize? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to apologize. Can we show my racist dog before we added the, the Iron Cross and the helmet, uh, the Kaiser helmet, the World War I uh, Field Marshal helmet? I mean, look at him, folks. That, <laughs> I'm so ashamed that my dog is Hitler. <laughs> In fact, it may be a genetic experiment. He may actually be Adolf Alois Hitler. Perhaps he escaped to America and is hiding out not Argentina. No, that was they were all hiding at the CIA as a French bulldog. Ladies and gentlemen, even though the uh, dog tag around his neck is of a bone, the Nazi skull and crossbones had a skull above a bone. Oh, my gosh, he is wearing a Nazi necklace. Gee, folks, this is just as bad as the teapot. Look at that little that that little bronze bell. That's 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 a that's a death's head, too. Well, thank God J.C. Penney banned that and. And, and you know what? I, I'm going to call the ADL and Southern Poverty Law Center and ask their advice. Should I euthanize Captain? Folks, I, I'm, I'm joking. I'm not serious. I'm illustrating absurdity by being absurd. I love Captain, and, uh, and I love him a lot. Uh, he does get kisses. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buy in these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. 
We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> Gentlemen, we are back live here, and I promised to premiere some clips from the uh, Paul Revere contest uh, that we're going to be uh, giving you the winners on Monday, Tuesday, and then first place on Wednesday. And, and so we've got some of that coming up. But just getting back to political correctness again, this is authoritarianism. This is not liberalism or caring about anybody. You need to understand that. You know, when Obama... Puts Al Qaeda in charge to kill 40,000 black people in Libya. Uh, it, it, it's in the back of the newspaper, and people say, good. Or when the UN goes in and kills whole villages in Africa or Latin America to create a carbon sink and take their villages, it's in the news, but they go, well, it's for the earth. You know, I, I mean, you, you have to understand, they manipulate your heartstrings. And so I had an idea. I said, I bet if, you know, making a joke about the J.C. Penney teapot, which obviously looks nothing like Hitler and wasn't meant to be Hitler, I mean, it is insane that my French bulldog uh, looks like he has a Hitler mustache because he doesn't have any fur on his upper lip. He's got black skin. He's got black spots on him. There's a black spot right there. That are there other racist animals that need to be taken to be uh, gotten rid of like the teapots? And uh, we did find some. If you type in Hitler animals or Hitler dog, we found a baby English bulldog, very racist. Heiling Hitler. Not only does its nose look like a Hitler mustache, look at the hate in the eyes. Uh, the dog has been trained to raise its arm. And, I mean, look, alert Al Sharpton immediately. And there's cats. Look at that cat right there. It's got a little bit of black on its nose. It's got black on its head that makes it look like Hitler. Adolf Hitler. Look at, uh, I mean, I've seen boxers, too, out that look a little bit like Hitler. And I'm going to walk over. And I'm going to say, hey. You need to be sent for re-education because we all know that you are basically in league uh, with Hitler. And, and, you know, I consider and joke about this, folks. It tears my heart out to know how conscious this authoritarianism is and how they get us all obsessed with imaginary stuff. Well, meanwhile, we're all losing our Bill of Rights and Constitution, our basic freedom. And we're getting some clips lined up of some of the forerunners. You can see them all at InfoWars.com forward slash uh, Revere. You can also just go to InfoWars.com forward slash Paul Revere. Uh, but uh, right now, let's go back to your phone calls. Let's talk to Nick in Wisconsin. Nick, you're on the air. Welcome. Alex. Hey, buddy. What's up, man? Uh, Long-time listener, first-time caller. Hey, uh, I just finished um, uh, 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 at Fort McCoy in Wisconsin up here. for a, I was a combatant. and they. The way the National Guard is treating it is they're sitting there. I'm nervous now. <laughs> he ain't saying anything. Go ahead, sir. Tell us your story. Uh, well, I started this company and worked up there and started shooting AKs off. And uh, they're sitting there uh, shooting back at us. But it just seems like, you know, the National Guard just doesn't have any respect. Yeah, I can't understand you. I really want to apologize. Um, are you drinking Robitussin? <laughs> no, I'm not awful lean. How much have you been drinking, sir? Not much. What are you drinking? Old Crow? Jack Daniels? Vodka? <laughs> Nothing. 
I just been waiting on so long. I just I'm just nervous. teasing you. You just I know you're nervous. I'm teasing. I apologize, sir. I'm 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 I'm, I'm being bad. Um, you you say you've been in a firefight with the National Guard? That's what it sounded yeah. like. Yeah, I was an enemy combatant. Oh, I, I apologize. You were hired to be part of a drill playing the part of a U.S. citizen in a role-playing battle with the National Guard. Yes, sir. See, now, now I can tell I kind of caught you. We've been sitting there on old. I apologize. Now you're very coherent, sir. And uh, yes, I'm a, so tell us, tell us about what happened. Uh, well, they had us in the field, and they had us in fatigues, BDUs, and um, they said just wait and wait for the, you know, the convoys and everything to come by. And a couple of times I didn't want to follow orders, but they were like, no, stand down, stand down. And, you know, I, it's, it's kind of bullshit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm dying. <laughs> All right, well, 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 next time you're part of something like that, um, you need to take photos of it and expose it. You can go to the Army websites and see that. I appreciate your call, Nick. Uh, let's uh, talk to... Janita in Oregon, you're on the air. Uh, go ahead. Hi, it's Jacinta. It's Jacinta, great. I'm sorry, I can't <laughs> read today. Believe it's me, it's, okay. it's descending everybody, into Twilight Zone. Everybody messes that name up. I, I didn't expect it to be correct. Um, good afternoon. Um, I have listened to you for a while now, usually for YouTube. And uh, believe it or not, um, I have a counter argument for the UK filter. Um, because what basically led me to this big awakening um, was pretty much I was anti-pornography for a long time, and I just could not figure out why it is so rampant and damaging and nobody's doing anything about it. Now, one thing led to another, and believe it or not, it led me to you because everything suddenly tied together. Um, I went from the anti-pornography to basically reading, do, do you know Yuri Bezmenov's books? He uh, went under the pseudonym Thomas Schumann. He was a de defector from Russia, Soviet Union. Are you there? Yeah, what happened is I was going to be premiering videos right now, but I'm the only one that had the list that had the time code on it. So I'm trying to queue up videos while you talk. I don't normally ignore the listeners, but I'm... I'm doing show prep here on air. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, here's the thing. Um, to say that you're blacklisted for opting in to basically go and, and do a, uh, you know, say, I want the filter turned off, I find that silly because for a while I've wanted something like this. Germany has something like that where you have to go to a post office and say, you know, I want to go ahead and be able to look at the adult content. And how this saves kids is, I mean, on the iPhones and whatnot, they can have access to, to it any time. And you can make the argument parents need to be more on top of their kids. No, I don't believe that. We have stores where you have to be 18 or older and able to even walk in. Um, but the Internet has taken away that step. It's sex on tap. And... Tell me this, why is the pornography market um, targeting boys from 11 to 17? That's underage. Well, I mean, they're trying to sexualize children. Nickelodeon and Viacom admit that. They have PBS documentaries about it um, because they find it effective marketing to bind you to the brand, uh, and, and they want to wreck society. I mean, it's a psychological warfare uh, weapon. And major governments... Uh, run all the major vices and Zbigniew Brzezinski's written multiple books admitting this their argument is well we control it then so it doesn't get out of hand I mean it's the ultimate thing of you know we control it it's like in the godfather where we're going to deal with the drugs but we're going to control it I mean that is so accurate to how they sell the idea of we're just going to give it to the colored people uh to quote the godfather uh their animals anyways let them lose their souls so, but but now, see, it's everybody. It's because we're all animals to the new world order. They're gods, when and really, they're the animals, or lower than the animals. Uh, so, yeah, they, look, look, they flood everything with porn, illegal porn, all of it, and then just use it like they flood the country with drugs to frame whoever they want.
and then to create a new witch hunt where they're the savior. They create the Al-Qaeda, they create the communists, they create the Nazis, they fight it. They ship the drugs in, they fight it. They put fluoride in the water, destroy education, and then say they're taking over with even more education to fight it. So yes, great, great question, ma'am. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Anna. Anna, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Thank you so much. Um, a couple of things that are going on right now in Florida that you might not be aware of. Um, the DEA is putting a lot of us physicians and pharmacists in jail. Um, they've closed down these quote-unquote pain clinics, which aren't a good idea, but they've left a lot of these people who are in pain without medication, and now they're committing suicide. So a lot of the uh, doctors who are working in these clinics are now being put in prison, and a lot of them were good doctors. They're, they're, they were doing nothing wrong. I don't know if you're aware of that. Uh, yes, I am aware of all this, and they are now criminalizing everything. Uh, if they say they're coming to your house because of drugs, we don't need a warrant, and a SWAT team comes. No law says it. Uh, they'll grab even $500 out of somebody's, even an old lady, and say, well, it may be drugs. And then the sheriff or, or the judge, you'll, I've seen him on the news go, CNN, I'll do whatever I want. We tested the bills and one of them had a residue. Well, they know almost all money, if it's old, you know, been in circulation, has drug residue on it. Because uh, it's being moved by drug dealers, by banks that are the drug dealers and by people that use it to snort drugs. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And so they're all, you see the shows on everywhere about, yes, we run check punch, take your cash. I mean, it's just, it's just we give people inoculations, we do what we want. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like Rick Perry saying, it's the law to take Gardasil when there's no law. They just run frauds on the helpless, gullible, childlike public. We have a brain damaged, childlike, poisoned, drunk on poison, uh, gibbering public brainwashed from birth by the television who literally think freedom is 101 million people on food assistance, who think uniformed police in black uniforms at checkpoints everywhere and helicopters looking through our walls is freedom. And so, yeah, I mean, the DEA, every agency is growing like cancer and they're taking over and they're hiring people that want to run our lives and we've seen this before and we're in deep trouble. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.